Hello friends. In the previous lecture, we had concluded the nodal analysis technique with the concept of super node. And in this session, we will be starting another technique which is useful in solving circuit problems, which is called mesh analysis. The definition of mesh I will be bringing in some time here now. But before that, let us see where we can use this mesh analysis. So basically, the mesh analysis is used in planar circuits. Planar circuits. So when I say the word planar circuits, naturally the question that comes is what is a planar circuit? So a planar circuit is a circuit which you can draw on a plane surface, which can be drawn on a plane surface. Easy, easy definition on a planar surface. However, it should not have any without any branch. Over or under any other branch. All right. This I will be explaining with a simple drawing. All right. So this is the area where you can use mesh analysis. So in case you are having non-planar circuits, which I will be just coming back, you cannot use a mesh analysis. You will have to go for node analysis there. So uh, let us let let's look at two drawings here now. Okay. Now this. Circuit number A is a planar circuit and this, this is a planar circuit and here you can use mesh analysis, alright. Here you can clearly see this particular branch is above the <coughs> other branches and this particular branch is also above the some other branches. So this is a non-planar circuit. So here you cannot use mesh analysis. So I will just write here mesh analysis is not possible here. Mesh analysis is possible in the circuit number A. Now, <coughs> before going to mesh analysis, we have to uh, just revisit what is path, what is loops, etc. And uh, basically it is identification of path loops, etc. And then I will come back to what is actually a mesh. All right. So let us go for the next page here now. Yeah. See, you are having number of circuits here and the green color circuit is the basic circuit and others are some things which I have traced, some something which I have traced here. So let's look at what circuit number A tells us. Circuit number A, if I tell that it is a path, I will be wrong. This is not a path. Why? Because this point is crossed multiple times. If I am traveling in any way here, this particular node is crossed more than two times. Therefore, this is not a path. This is not a path. Circuit number B also, you can clearly see if I move like this, in the, if I have to complete this thing here, I have to go through the central node twice. So this is also not a path. All right. Now, let us take the other uh, path here now. Okay. So it's something like this. So this is the path I'm going to take. Yeah, I'm starting from this point. I'm going like this and I'm coming back to the same point here. All right. I'm coming back to the same point. Now, this is basically a loop. All right. So this is a loop we already know that now here also let us see what is this i'm starting from here i'm going like this i'm continuing my path like this all right so this is a path and if i reach the same point it becomes a loop so this is also a loop let us take this circuit here all right so if i start from this point i'm moving like this and i come to the same point this is also a loop this is also a loop similarly this is also a loop the circuit number f is also a loop but what is the difference between these loops here in this loop the outer loop which i have taken i can play take more loops here see if i start from here and if i go like this and i come back here this is also a loop here also i can start from like this and i can come back like this so this is also a loop so basically the loops number c and d are loops which have other loops inside that particular loop all right but circuit number e and circuit number f the loops which i have traced they don't have any other loops within them all right so <coughs> those loops which does not contain any other loop is called a mesh all right so what is a mesh mesh is a loop so mesh is also a loop which does not contain which does not contain 
any other loop all right so this is a loop but this is not a mesh this is not a mesh this is a loop but this is also not a mesh this particular circuit in e it is a loop as well as mesh and this is also a loop as well as a mesh basically the term comes see this is mesh right you know grid mesh and all so each point here i'll just do it with a different color each thing here is an individual mesh all right these are all meshes which does not which does not contain any other loop so basically that is the definition of mesh it is a loop which does not contain any other loop so therefore in mesh analysis you have to identify meshes in the circuit all right now friends let us take this circuit here and let me assume that i want to find the currents some of the currents here so let me take the current so this let me call it as i1 and let me call this as i2 and naturally the current which is flowing here will be i1 minus i2 we have known all these things till now now how can i solve this question so basically how i can solve this question is i can apply two kvls one i can apply here and the next one i can apply here so let's see what we get when we apply the kvl so let me start from here so i get 6 i1 plus 3 into i1 minus i2 minus 42 equal to 0 all right so if i solve this i get 9 i1 minus 3 i2 equal to 42 this is my first equation all right let me take the second one here so i start in this point and i'm going to end at that point itself so what do i get i get 4 i2 minus 10 and here see my current and the current direction are different so i have to put a negative sign so minus 3 into i1 minus i2 equal to 0 so what do i get i get minus 3 i1 and this will be plus 7 i2 equal to 10 all right so you grab your calculators and if you put this you will get i1 to be equal to 6 amperes and i2 to be equal to 4 amperes so this is one way of solving in fact if you do the method like this you can solve any question all right personally i also prefer this method but just for the academic sake we have to learn the proper mesh analysis technique all right in which we are going to define mesh currents also so let me take the same circuit once again let me paste it yeah all right so what is mesh current so i have told you in this you can identify two meshes so this particular thing which i am uh, let me just put that mesh in a different color yeah so this particular marking which i am doing see this thing here this is one mesh and this is the second mesh all right so you can clearly see this mesh is a loop which does not contain any other part so the next step is to identify mesh currents all right so mesh currents you have to put it like this so this is the mesh current i1 inside mesh 1 and this will be the mesh current i2 inside mesh 2 all right so you can clearly see this mesh current i1 is flowing through the 6 ohm all right and the mesh current i2 is flowing through the 4 ohm that, that is a good thing because uh, elements which are not common uh, <coughs> in the two meshes have different currents and that is an advantage for us all right so let us start writing by the kvl and there is an important thing which you have to identify when you are going to write the current through the 3 ohm resistor so let us start at this point and let us move in the same direction as the current see the current is moving like this right current is moving like this all right so i get 6 i1 all right now i am entering the 3 ohm resistor so because you have selected one uh, first the first mesh and your main current is i1 here and you are moving in the downward direction clearly the current i2 is moving the upward direction and it is opposing the mesh current i1 therefore the downward current direction will be i1 minus i2 so because we are moving in the same direction the downward direction so i can put plus 3 into i1 minus i2 i2 because i2 is having a negative value because i2 is opposing the uh, <coughs> i1 so this is one thing and next i come here so i reach the minus 42 so that is equal to 0 so what do i get 9 i1 minus 3 i2 equal to 42 all right so this is my first equation let's take the second mesh here so this is the first mesh and let me put the second mesh equation so i start here so clearly i2 is the mesh current and that is going to flow through the 4 ohm resistor so it is 4 into i2 minus 10 because i am entering the negative terminal now look at here I am going the same direction as current and that is in the upward direction in the mesh one I was going the downward direction but in when I am following I2 I am going the upward direction so 
when you are tele selecting I2 and you want a positive value for the effective value should be positive that should be in the upward direction right now who is opposing I2 I1 is opposing I2 therefore you get plus 3 into I2 minus I1 equal to 0 so what do you get here you get minus 3 I1 plus 7 I2 equal to 10 this is the second equation you can clearly see the first equation in the first method and the first equation in the mesh analysis technique are the same and the second equation of both the methods are also same so if you solve you will get the same results all right in fact you can do any problem with the same technique which i have discussed here in fact many people use this particular method and use kvl and continue with their problems but mesh analysis also is a proven technique and some people are comfortable with this and some people are comfortable with this we, we will be doing basically uh, with this technique because that is what followed in the books but personally I use this particular technique because in this I don't get confused with mesh currents and all because already always my currents are defined defined properly so till the mesh analysis technique concept finishes I will be following this method all right but in other circuits when I do I will be using this method so it is your priority you can select the method which you like and you can do the problems so let us take the first problem all right let us take the first problem now in this particular question they have already given the mesh current and you are asked to find the value of i1 and i2 so as usual we can start from this point let us take the first mesh and write a kvl around it now this one i1 is going to flow through the 14 ohm because it is following this path and i am also moving the same direction so it is 14 into i1 all right now what do i get here so these two resistors are in series so i can just combine them and put one particular 10 ohm resistor all right so this current is moving downwards and i2 is opposing that so i get plus 10 into i1 minus i2 now i am putting a plus sign because i am moving the same direction as the current all right so minus 6 equal to 0 so what do you get 24 into i1 minus 10 into i2 equal to 6 and this becomes your first equation so this is the first mesh and for the second mesh let's start from this point and let us move in this particular direction in the same direction as the current so this is my direction all right i am also moving the same direction so this i2 will be flowing through the 10 ohm resistor in the same direction in which i am moving so it is 10 into i2 all right then we see the plus 5 volt and look at here i am entering like this and i1 is opposing me all right i1 is opposing me and i2 and i1 are in opposition with each other so i get plus 10 into so because i1 is opposing i put minus i1 so that's equal to 0 so what do i get i get minus 10 i1 plus 20 into i2 equal to minus 5 all right so if i calculate using the calculator i will get i1 to be equal to 184.210 milliamperes and I2 will be equal to minus 157.9 milliamperes. Now, what does this minus sign indicate? The minus sign just indicate that we have taken the current in the wrong direction. In fact, it is not wrong, but for the positive value, the mesh current would have been the opposite direction. So let me just redraw the circuit just to clear the confusion. Yeah, this is 6, and uh, this is like this. I'm not putting the resistor values. Yeah. So the first mesh current will be 184.210 milliamperes and if you are putting the same direction as given in the question you will have to put a negative sign now because we have got a negative sign let me just put the current like this all right and this will be plus 157.9 milliamperes all right now before concluding let me just do one more problem which has three meshes in it all right now till now we have done two meshes now let us do a problem with three meshes all right now let in this problem you are asked to find the value of i1 i2 and i3 the uh, the meshes they itself they have identified in the problem if they have not given you can put your own current directions now let us start from this point and let us move through the first mesh which is this one all right the first mesh let me just do it like this so this is the first mesh all right so if i put the mesh equation here so the first I am moving through the 1 ohm resistor right now 1 ohm resistor is common for the mesh number 1 and mesh number 2 because I am moving in the downward direction I1 is my priority current so it will be 1 into I1 minus I2 because I2 is opposing 
I1. All right. Now, then I am coming to the six volt source. So it is plus. So plus six. Now, when I move through the two ohm resistor, clearly I can see that the one I1 and I3 are in opposition with each other. So I get plus two into I1 minus I3, and then I am reaching the minus seven volt. So minus seven equal to zero. So if I solve this, I will get I1 three into I1 minus I2 minus two into I3 equal to plus one. So this is my first equation for the first mesh. So for the second mesh, I will start from this point. I will move like this, and I will come here like this. So clearly. Two is not common with any mesh, so that is the the I two will be flowing through the two ohm resistor. Therefore, I will get two into I two. Clearly, through the three ohm when I am moving, I three is opposing I two, so I get plus three into I two minus I three. All right, and when I come back here, I am moving in this direction, in same direction as the current. I one is opposing I two, so plus I two minus I one equal to zero. All right. So if I simplify this, I will get minus I one plus six I two minus three I three equal to zero, and this is the second equation. Let us let us put the third equation now for the third mesh. So this is the third mesh. All right, I'll just put, I'll just shade it little bit. So this is the third mesh. So I start from here. Now remember, I three is our main current here now. So I'm starting like this. I'm moving in the same direction as I three, <coughs> the clockwise direction. All right. So I start from this point. So three into I three is moving like this. I two is opposing. So I three minus I two. All right. Then I come through the one ohm resistor. So that is exclusive to the uh, third mesh. So I one into I three. And look at now. I am entering like this through the two ohm, but I one is opposing. So I get plus two into I three minus I one. Then I enter the negative. So minus six equal to zero. So if I simplify this, what will I get? I will get minus two into I one minus three I two plus six I three equal to six. Take your calculators, plug in these values, and you will get I one to be equal to three amps, I two to be equal to two amps, and I three will be equal to three amps. All right. So basically, in all these problems, we are just finding current or voltage values, but the question might be. to find the power also all right so in case somebody asks you what is the <coughs> power delivered by the 7 volt so what will you do you know i1 value and because the current is leaving the uh, positive terminal the power generated will be positive so you put a plus sign and 7 into 3 equal to plus 21 volts all right and if you want to find the uh, power dissipated in the 1 ohm resistor so power dissipated in the 1 ohm resistor Which is common between one and two, all right? Because there are two one ohm resistors. What you can do now? This current, which is going to flow in the downward direction, will be I one minus I two. So I one minus I two whole square into one. So I one is three, and uh, I two is two. So whole square into one. So it is one watt. <coughs> so the problem might be many, but ultimately our objective is to find voltage and current. From that, you can find anything else. now in the next problem also in the next uh, sorry next session also we'll be doing some problems about mesh analysis i will introduce the concept of the super mesh analogous to super node maybe after a couple of lectures and uh, i hope you have understood this lecture and i'll see you in the next lecture thank you